Well, he's had his last stem cell spinal uh, Wednesday. Today is Friday, and we leave tomorrow. And I can't believe that, you know, we've gotten this far. It's been an experience I will never forget. Uh, never dreamed that at my age I'd be coming to China, halfway around the world. But it is something I will be forever grateful for. Not only for what it's done for Al, but the people we've met. And putting things in perspective, the problems we've seen, the conditions that people are dealing with, make us feel like we have no right to complain about anything. Nothing. The patients, the bravest people, the caregivers, unbelievable. An ex-wife came with her husband. A woman who was actually a stranger came with someone. She met her for one week at a, a spa, and this girl asked her to be her caregiver, and she went. We've, there's so many stories, and for all of us, quality of life has been improved. Patients as well as caregivers. And <clears throat> it's an education you couldn't buy. It, it happened and we're, it's changed our lives completely. I don't think we'll ever be the same. Hopefully we've changed for the better. This is four weeks into the program and uh, we met quite a few people in that, that period of time. Overall, I, I have to say I, I hadn't seen anybody um, make remarkable progress, but uh, almost to a person, they've all improved somewhat. In my case, my uh, dizziness, dizziness had disappeared. It was problematic for walking, and uh, as I said, I could jump and jog now. Somewhat. I forgot there was something else, and I I'd lost my my voice. Is so she could remind me of it. I've noticed more than he's noticed. He's the engineer, and he's more analytical. I'm I see him daily. First of all, he's not as tired. The fatigue was so much more at home. Yeah, I haven't seen any evidence of that. His dizziness has lessened considerably. Uh, I think his walking has improved. He could not jog, and he said how he missed that, being able to do that. When I say jog, it's not a heavy, hearty jog, but it's a jog. A f he describes it as a fast walk something he could not do before. I think the running uh, with the five pound weights on my feet is probably something I couldn't do before, and jumping, definitely couldn't do that before. The rest of the stuff uh, will come with time and effort. Anything he couldn't do before, that's an improvement if he's doing it now. Could not toss a ball to our grandson. Well. Andy's got him tossing the ball and catching it. That's an improvement. Uh, the speech, we're, we're waiting for that to improve more, but I feel that that's gonna come once we get home and you know we get over the jet lag and we're gonna get a karaoke. Our speech pathologist suggested he sings and he only knows one song, so we're going to karaoke. As long as I don't sing, that's what he said. <laughs> Uh, our plans are to expand, he's going to expand our exercise room, thinking about what he's going to paint next. We have a lot of plans, a lot of things to do once we get home. Oh, this, this is a big one. Um, I should look at that. I used to, when going through the day, have to really lie down for a half an hour or so in the early afternoon. Now 
I uh, don't feel any fatigue or sore. Of course, here at the, at the uh, treatment center, we, we have a fairly controlled lifestyle. So other than PT, there's a lot of sitting around and reading. The real test will come when we go back to normal life and start working again. But I, frankly, I'm, I'm almost convinced that the uh, abnormal fatigue is gone. Um, excessive saliva. That was something that was uh, surprising to hear. Um, what I had, in speaking, I had, uh, for some reason, doubled developed excessive saliva when they talked and it made it difficult if more so to talk. And in chatting with a nurse, Wendy, who uh, was a very good friend of Brian McNeil, she said that Brian had a very similar problem. Also, talking to the other attacks of patients, they also said they had the same problem. So there's some similarities, some common problems that's another advantage of coming here to the the only area in the world that, that treats attacks is that you have the opportunity to compare notes with other attacks of patients and so what their symptoms are and what your symptoms are. And that was that was a quite um, unique opportunity for us because most of us are uh, function in isolation. You know, we, we have no other than what's available on the internet. And some of these things don't show up, but it's, it's all word of mouth, really. He's not so tired. Uh, he's an energetic guy, and he's always on the go, thinking about his next project, and kind of tough to do when you got to take a nap every day <laughs> at a certain time, something that he never did. I, I welcome that. And also the fact that he's not dizzy like he was. I can't imagine that. I know I had a, one incident myself of feeling that dizziness come over me. The worst thing I ever felt. He had it 24 hours a day, and he doesn't have that anymore. I think of the four weeks that there have been, have been improvements in the PT portion of the program and uh, Andy had me jogging down the hall now with weights on my feet, which I, I, I'm sure I could do before. I was uh, jumping somewhat. And for some reason, ataxia patients cannot jump. I don't know why it is, but I've seen it a few uh, seen a few people try to leap forward, and the, we just can't do it. So having the ability to uh, put two feet together and leap, do bird jump without the word, <laughs> and then uh, was very uh, rewarding for us. As far as heel to toe, I uh, am getting better, but I think this is really a long term project for me. And the next step is really, uh, of course, you have plenty of time to think about things like this, but uh, I plan to go down to my studio, which I spent, what, six, eight hours a day, and clean that up first, and then restructure my gym according to, to my special needs. As I mentioned, I view this as a two-phase project. The first phase was to, to get the stem cells. The second phase is really to continue on after we go home now and um, train the stem cells to perform what a wiring that neurons have to perform. So I'm looking uh, up to six months. I don't know if they're viable beyond six months, but I hope they will be, but um, Certainly, that should be long enough to, to see in the effects. Talking more this month than he has in the whole 21 years we've been married. I'm not exaggerating. I, I didn't know he was such a prolific speecher, <laughs> speaker. <laughs> and that's what he has to do more. Our speech pathologist has encouraged him to speak more and to sing. So we're going to 
focus on that also when we get home. Yeah, when we first uh, came here, and uh, the day I was initially entered uh, that was the day of uh, the first spinal transplant, and I was a little apprehensive, not knowing what to expect. Uh, my experience has been has been quite positive. That uh, uh, when the vetting goes into the IV, uh, you stop and the local is here in your, in your back, you really don't feel a thing. And I've had five now and none of them have been painful. The, of course, the most difficult, difficult part is uh, spending six hours in bed on your back. Initially, the, the van was very effective and uh, I slept for the first few hours. For some reason, the effectiveness of the Valium uh, decreased with time, and uh, the last one, last spinal, I was alert to the whole procedure and still didn't feel any pain or any discover whatsoever. The procedure takes less than half an hour, so it's all very quickly. But just the, the next six, uh, six hours, there's a problem, especially since. Uh, in some cases, I didn't have time for lunch, and of course my wife would go out and order chicken wings and eat in the room at the same time, and it, it made it even more difficult. And she tell me how good the, the ways were. <laughs> but aside from that, it was a fine experience for us. I was so scared, not knowing what to expect and not knowing how long it was going to last and if he was going to be in pain and and none of that happened. It, it went perfectly. He had no pain. He came out of it and when they brought him back to the room I said, what do you want? He said, a kiss. <laughs> My husband gets very romantic when he's under. <laughs> and. You know, that's the way the whole thing started, and he was fine. The six hours passed, and I think I ordered a pizza for 9 o'clock that night, <laughs> and he ate it like, you know, normal and went back to sleep for the whole night after sleeping six hours. And it just continued on like that, no real problems, uh, but seeing little improvements you know, as we went along. Uh, as we've been told, it's baby steps. And like a baby, you take baby steps before giant steps. And again, I'll say it's improving the quality of life for everybody who's here. Whatever little step of improvement is better than what we had before we came because we had no hope, no, no nothing. I would encourage anyone thinking about this to move quickly. The sooner you get here, the better chance you have for improvement. I think we've seen that with somebody who had ataxia early on. And he came here and saw improvements so quickly. And <clears throat> I think that's the key. We originally were going to come in March. and. We started seeing, you know, Al's condition progress, and we decided to come sooner in November. We're so glad that we did. Don't hesitate. I still can't argue with my wife and win the argument, so I gave one up on that a long time ago. So I'm Tate. He did say that uh, he still can't win an argument with you. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. Since he's been feeling better, he's getting a little feisty. And <laughs> you know what? It's okay. I welcome that. <laughs>